What's going on people, this is Akala and I want to send a big shout out to Flip Life TV. Yo. The funny thing is for me is that kind of outside of the urban scene, uh, the way my agent has treated my career has been much more like a band than a rapper. And so I don't really do kind of love live club PA circuit. We've done a lot of festivals over the years, done a lot of live touring. I'm on my fifth solo headline UK tour. And all right, they might not be Wembley Arena, you know what I mean? But as an independent artist, if you can sell between 300 and 700, 800 tickets in any city in the country on your own without uh, a, a kind of club, if that makes sense, and they're pay people are paying to see you, and you can sell some merchandise and whatever else, you can build a genuine career. Obviously, if there comes a point when a bigger company wants to come in, um, that gets it, it depends what that relationship would be. I'm big on owning my own masters, owning my own product, um, and maintaining that independence. I'm not willing to kind of, in the words of KRS, want to shake my ass for MTV. You know what I mean? If they want to come to us, then then, uh, then, then we're cool with that. But we're not willing to change to fit in with what's going on, because to me, that's not the point. And in more life, more mobiles, listen close to the words, London City. Oh, by the way, the brand new album, Double Think, is out now. Double Think, 100% independent, self-owned hip-hop music. Listen, listen close. of African oral traditions that have existed for hundreds if not thousands of years. Hip hop is what happens when you put very creative, very brilliant people in an environment where they don't have much. So when you take the instruments away, kids who would have been Miles Davis or John Coltrane become Marley Marl and KRS-One. Um, but it has to be understood that did those young people have instruments, they would have been continued to be John Coltrane or Miles Davis or Maceo Parker. Um, so we can't intrinsically link Hip hop to deprivation, creativity to deprivation. We won't stop being creative just because we're not deprived anymore. And I think all of those things have to start being understood. Um, and hip hop has to start being put in a context as a worldwide voice of African people, but also of oppressed people everywhere. That's the way I see uh, hip hop, and that's why I think hip -hop, hip hop is such a politically inconvenient music. Come on, bro, I'm so sick of those Afro. Don't understand what you will when you grow up, you always too wet to me. Come on, bro, I'm guessing it is the flow's machine, it's the head of the whole damn globe. Not some readers, ask for screamers, fair y'all down there, hit goalkeepers That sleep is jeepers, creepers, I ain't convinced that you rule like Jesus Feel like I'm a mobile compared to beepers, when you compare me to these bloody eaters I'm a genius and I really mean it, we're not the same, like breast and a penis The rest of your team is just the weakest, can't hold it down like bulimics Talk so much shit, you didn't even believe it, stop asking for things before you receive it What are you doing, you ain't got another life, Two silly put them up, come on have a slices Fruit for fruit, they can have a bite, they steal my turn like a double on a dice I take time like I stuck up a jewelers, spit around to the shop, the rumors So hard I'll fuck up the tumors, chemo flow, they follow like lunas, you make claims Just unfounded, stop telling tunes, you'll get crowded, nobody cares about who you go around with. Keep back the mic, 
that he says not allowed it. He is my son, but I'm just not proud of him. He went deliberate, he's a legitimate idiot. It's just cool to be a literal. I really don't get still talking about pistols. The only thing you ever bust into is tissue. Kind of the way we like to work has always been, I mean, in the beginning when we came out, we were aware that some people would make that association, so we kind of deliberately separated what we were doing, didn't put in the bio or the press releases. Uh, didn't do any features for that reason, wanted to be established and respected on our own merit because we're from a background where it doesn't really matter who your cousin is or your big brother is, like you have to earn your own stripes so to speak um, and so kind of I deliberately uh, and we both deliberately, her and myself, um, said it was best for me to kind of maintain that separation. I think we're at a stage now, three albums in, where enough people know about it that if the right collaboration came around we'd do it. Um, we've done a few underground stuff like with A Little Darker but I don't like to just do records to do them. We, if, if the right uh, track comes up and the right reason, then, then we'll do it. If not, then it'll be whenever it'll be. enough for Bob Marley, it's good enough for you. Like, that's, that's as simple as that. Bob Marley's record that really crossed him over, Exodus, was his ninth album. Granted, he was relatively well known with each album before that, but the album that made him blow, as, as the kids like to say, was his ninth album. And if it's good enough for Bob Marley to wait nine albums, it's damn sure good enough for everybody else. Um, and the same is true of people like Prince or Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix was touring with the Isley Brothers and with Little Richard got kicked off the tour, had to come to England. Mm. Um, and so I would say to young people, if you're an artist, work, be an artist, and it takes 10 years, maybe 15 years, but if you're an artist, you'll create something that lasts, and ultimately in the long run, you'll create better business, because Bob Marley's records will sell from now till as long as there is recorded music. 